Hey guys, Zane here with another one take review, and I'm also slacking off because uh, I should be doing my Rock Hall review series right now where I talk about each of the current year's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees, one album by them, I should say more specifically, and uh, then I rate it and then I talk about their credentials for the Hall. But uh, one of my favorite albums of all time, not today as I'm uploading this, but yesterday, just turned 20 years old, and that album is none other than All Hail West Texas by the Mountain Goats. It's kind of an indie folk classic at this point, really. I mean, kind of a kind of a legendary album almost and I know that uh, I probably shouldn't be taking a break from that series because there's 17 parts in it and I'm not even halfway through it I don't think but I, I still want to spend some time to talk about this album because I do have a deep passion for both uh, the Mountain Goats music and especially this record that I just felt like I should talk about and uh, you know there's no better time for me to talk about it than uh, just about its 20th anniversary so uh, without further ado here are my uh Thoughts on All Hail West Texas. So first of all, the first thing that definitely uh, becomes apparent when you start listening to this album is the very lo-fi nature of the sound here and the basically non-existent production. And that is because uh, alongside pretty much every uh, Mountain Goats album that came before All Hail West Texas, as far as I'm concerned, this record was uh, recorded on a Panasonic boombox. And I'm just going to say, uh, take that for what you will. I know a lot of people may not like that. I... Uh, understand why a lot of people would kind of uh, be turned off by that sort of sound, but ultimately I think it actually works in its favor. This is a very uh, man and his guitar kind of album, and I genuinely believe that uh, All Hail West Texas benefits from this sort of lack of production and sort of this increase of that just lo-fi recorded on a boombox kind of sound. There's songs here that are just so very personal and upfront about what they're talking about, that I think in a larger, maybe more fleshed out setting, they wouldn't have worked quite as well. I just genuinely find songs like, uh, say, Fall of the Star High School Quarter or, uh, Running Back, I really think that is just an example of a song that just would not have worked as well as it does without that lo-fi production. We've got songs like Balance. They're just songs that really feel very face-to-face uh, -face almost with uh, frontman John Darnielle. And I do think that uh, without that sort of sound, and if this album weren't recorded on a Panasonic boombox, that it wouldn't have worked quite as well as it does, even if it still would have worked well, I'm sure. One of the things that the Mountain Goats have been most uh, commonly praised for over the years, whether it be uh, these years of the Mountain Goats where it was actually just a pseudonym for uh, frontman John Darnielle, or the later years where they actually were a legitimate band, a uh, multi-member outfit, is songwriting, and I do think that's warranted. There is some just absolutely amazing songwriting throughout the Mountain Goats' discography that ensures even the couple of weaker releases, not even bad releases, but just weaker releases that I've heard from them, are still at least good because there's just some really fantastic lyricism spread throughout them. In fact, I would maybe argue that the Mountain Goats might just be one of the most consistent sources of just really amazing songwriting and wordsmithery, if that's even a word, which it probably isn't, it's for the last couple decades, maybe. And maybe just in all of uh, folk music in general and all of uh, singer-songwriter-esque music, uh, there's just some songs here that are written very beautifully, but the thing that I really love about John Darnielle as a songwriter is how just kind of sort of blunt he is at times. There's no... Uh, layering of uh, metaphorical uh, poetry or anything like that here. He has his own style of poetry, you know, this isn't uh, Leonard Cohen or anything like that where you have to, you know, decipher line by line of like what this could represent and what this could represent and how does this correlate to this line and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You get my point. This record and pretty much all of the Mountain Goats' stuff is just sort of very, very uh, just honest and that's something that I love about especially All Hail West Texas. I mean, You've got some songs here, like my, one of my personal favorite tracks from the band, uh, Fault Lines. You've got the fan favorite, kind of classic now, uh, the best ever death metal band in Denton, that are just kind of telling these stories and doing so very beautifully with uh, some great prose and word choice. But at the same time, there's no like uh, confusion. It's not trying to sort of muddy what the story is about. It's straightforward, and it's just kind of telling a story to you through music rather than uh, giving you a poetry or a poem backed by acoustic guitar and sort of this almost puzzle to figure out and even though again that might be something that turns people away from this album and the mountain goats in general maybe people might not like the sort of straightforwardness of it all i think that again it ultimately benefits the band and the sound of the record and just how well the record flows overall 
As I previously stated, the instrumentals here are very, very simple. It's just uh, John Darnielle and an acoustic guitar. This is a very man in his guitar kind of album, which I have a very soft spot for. But um, this uh, would also be the last album before the Mountain Goats became, again, a multi-member actual band. Uh, their next album, Tallahassee, would have uh, actual members beyond Darnielle. But for this time being, this was uh, this was just a pseudonym for All Hail West Texas, and once again, similar to the Lo-Fi production, even though I understand how a lot of people may not like the fact that this is literally, for the most part, just acoustic guitar and vocals, I absolutely adore it. Uh, similar to the lyricism, I do think that All Hail West Texas is made slightly more personal with uh, certain songs like uh, Color in Your Cheeks that really it's kind of hard to imagine what they would sound like in any other setting. And while I don't think that things would sound bad here, uh, more fleshed out, of course, uh, the Mountain Goats proved that they could do amazing things uh, with fleshed out music and whatnot. Even their uh, latest album, Dark in Here, was just outstanding. But at the same time, I kind of am glad that this was uh, just recorded with a guitar, a boombox, and a guy that can write some amazing songs, because really it just kind of it almost feels like you're sitting directly next to him, just maybe there's a wall between you due to, you know, sound quality from, again, Panasonic Boombox. But uh, that sort of stripped-down style really just makes this such a uh, very likable album, at least in my opinion. Maybe the thing that I like the most about All Hail West Texas and arguably most of uh, the Mountain Goats' earlier albums is the fact that this has no right to hold up as well as it does, and it holds up beautifully. Allow me to just go over this again real quick. Man with nothing but guitar and very straightforward, non-metaphorical lyricism records album on a boombox. Does that sound like it would sound good even a year or two after it came out, even a month or two after it came out? Because it doesn't to me. But 20 years on, All Hail West Texas is just played with a sense of just passion and conviction that it manages to still just hold the same emotional punches that it did when it came out. I mean, just the um, amount of uh, just beautiful songwriting and just very in almost intense performances at a time, just a casual intensity more than intense in the sense of, like, a violent playing or anything like that. I really do think, uh, ensure this album isn't held back by, you know, its lower budget or its status as an indie album. And really, if you want a, just a really great example of someone not letting a, uh, struggle with things like budget, for example, for this one, uh, if you want an example of something, or uh, someone not letting anything hold them back from making music and really amazing music at that, I don't think you need to look any further than All Hail West Texas, or really, uh, most of the Mountain Goats' early albums. So, overall, uh, All Hail West Texas is absolutely just a classic, nothing short of a classic, and maybe is the best album ever released under the Mountain Goats' name, which is something pretty impressive, considering they do have some really fantastic albums under that name. I mean, a band with albums like Tallahassee, The Sunset Tree, Goths, it's kind of insane that they have an album that is better than all of those. Most bands can't even get one album that's as good as any of those records, and I do think that the Mountain Goats really achieved something here that really few bands or artists can, which is, they took something so min- or I should say he, because this was, again, like I said before, John Darnielle only, but Darnielle took something, a concept so minimalistic, just a guy telling stories with an acoustic guitar to a boombox, and made it one of the best indie folk albums, or just folk albums in general, ever recorded. And uh, even though it's difficult to see due to uh, lighting, the album cover on the screen, but the album cover uh, states that uh, All Hail West, Te West Texas is uh, one thing. It is an album with 14 songs about seven people, two houses, a motorcycle, and a lock treatment facility for adolescent boys. And you know what? It may just be some of the best songwriting of all time ever made about any of those things. And with that being said, I am going to have to give this album uh, 5 stars out of 5. It's just an incredible album that really shouldn't be as incredible as it is, but it's just done beautifully, and I think it's probably the Mountain Goats' best album, so I do highly recommend this. So yeah, 5 stars out of 5, and with that being said, that is the end of this review, so I will see you guys in the next one.